Hey everybody, it's day 483 um, on this journey to 2000 where I play a game of chess every day and I put it on YouTube for folks to follow along and I track my progress on chess.com. I'm currently rated 1414 after a win yesterday and um, uh, about a week ago I posted a video um, asking uh, for folks to drop their chess.com IDs in the comments so I can select someone to uh, play a game on my subscriber series. And Mr. Latis, um, I think we'll be playing soon. I'll be reaching out to you uh, here shortly um, on chess.com to, to schedule something. So looking forward to playing you. On that note, Let's see who I'm playing today. Ah, yes. Kapoi double O. Kapoi zero zero out of Indonesia. Kapoi zero zero is rated fifteen fifty three. Here we have the main line of the Carl Khan. Main line would come this way, yep. And now let's just continue with development. And the development here is interesting because Yeah, maybe this one. It's been a while since I've played the main line where the knight retreats back. Most times they take and we enter into the uh, Tartic Hour. The knight's trapped here. So I might make some space for it. But I'm moving this piece twice, so let's just focus on developing. And then I can push that later. I did tell myself, maintain a time advantage. Um, develop all your pieces before attacking. It looks like we are at that point now where I can start. This knight needs to get out though. Start pushing some of these to make room for it. There's a mate threat here on H7. Do it anyways. I do not have a time advantage. I have spent way too much time here in the opening. This is a reminder for me to go back and study the Karol Khan main line a little bit when Knight retreats back. Okay. 
So here I've got rook, maybe, yeah, I got on a half open file here. Or semi open file, and then <clears throat> take, 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 will work. And then I also have take, 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 and they don't move the queen. Then I've got this uh, skewer here. That might be thinking too many moves ahead. This pawn's hanging. <laughs> but I don't want to go pawn grabbing pawns here. I need to be methodical of this. I've got the time advantage back now. They've got the center pawns here, but that'll change after this. They have an isolated queen pawn, which I can attack pretty well. Now that my rook is on this d8 square. <coughs> So I shall move my queen. Let's bring it back here for safety, for safekeeping. Then I think I'll try and exchange this so I still am kind of fixated on this this bishop getting out and skewering but I'd hate to have tunnel vision on that so let's make sure I'm not make sure I'm thinking about what my opponent is going to do it's still there so I don't see a reason why this wouldn't work if they let me defenders for this if they don't take this now I might just go yeah they do take so if I move this here they can defend here and I mean take T oh they they can retreat back so let's take this knight and it looks like the game might be a little even here but both both sides have bishops if I take let's see take take here Take, take, 
take, take. I would simplify the position, but I don't really have any kind of advantage. But I can't spend too much time thinking about it. Let's just move. See the pawn coming in. Let's make sure to stay on, keep these guys on the dark squares. Here threatens mate, but then what can I do with it after this? Or this. Let's see. Here. Let's see this. Take. 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 If I go here. I'm going to do this, threaten the mate, and then swing my queen over. Attack this pawn, they defend. I come up and cause some inconveniences there. It's a tough situation. <clears throat> I do. We do have plenty of time. We're already on move 24. We are both moving very quickly here. Uh-oh, there's a fascinating move. Check does get my queen here. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do that. That way I'm attacking. All three of these and I'm targeting this square. I'm anticipating this, that would be a good good way to defend these pawns, and then I come up here. And then they probably go here. And then I dig, they dig, and then they dig. Wait on. If this Oh, they won't do that because I'll take, okay. So they do that now and take, take, take. And if they come down check, then I've got mate. Oh, it's not mate because they can come back. I still think taking in this position is good because I don't want to uh, have to worry about defending or moving that rook. Oh, but this is mate. I'll take here. 
That way queen can't move. Or else I take the bishop and if this and then check, I'm here. And then they can't come back with another check. So I think this is a safe move. Threatens mate over here on f1. Okay. And do I simplify the position? With takes, takes with the pass pawn here? Or do I take this pawn? I think I might just take this pawn. Okay, we are up in material now. Pass pawn here. Mate threats. Here's a good square to threaten mate and attack this. do not have a time advantage anymore, but I feel like the purpose of that, I've reaped the benefits. I've been able to calculate where it matters. I do feel like I'm in a good spot here. Let's continue forward with the plan. This is mate, they have to defend it. If this, I come here, this I take, okay. They can't come back and check again. So they might just be grasping at straws here. I would even maybe guess there might be a resignation in my, yeah. Okay. Thank you for the game. Got point double O. Let's check out the analysis. On day 483, I played with 86% accuracy. I had two blunders. Wow, so I did have a couple of blunders. Um, one mistake, so it'll be interesting to see where those were. It looks like white did have an advantage every time I blundered, um, <clears throat> all the way up to a 2.25 advantage. Um, I did feel a little cramped in the opening, um, given that I didn't know the right moves to develop after knight retreated to, uh, um, to the g3 square, but uh, yeah, let's see. I'll go through this here. All right, so that is an inaccuracy. Um, the best move. Ah, h5. They come to me, I defend, and I get ready to castle king side yeah okay cool good to know good to know that in the Karakhan when they retreat their knight back to g3 i go h5 c5 was also a move but i stayed true to my principle of not moving the same piece twice in the opening um, G6 could have been an option as well to, to Fianchetto over here. I didn't even consider that. I haven't really, um, I don't really Fianchetto that much. Uh, E5 could have been an answer because it takes, then I can take here. Let's see what that would look like. Here, take, I take back, they take, and then come up here to threaten the fork okay so now I know a few other options um, for when the knight retreats back 
So I focus on developing the queen to b6 was uh, my first blunder. And again, I was just focusing on trying to develop my pieces, knowing that the knight's kind of clunky there. Um, yeah, pushing that was the best option. But again, I tried to stay true to the, uh, to the principles of, I think, given that I put myself in this kind of suboptimal position to begin with, I should have broken the... Uh, the mantra of of not moving the pieces twice in the opening again just to free that night but um, they make a good move a better move for them would have been to uh, come down and attack the knight because they had this queen uh, the queen d3 move did scare me quite a bit uh, to threaten mate here All right, so there's my first mistake. And then after they come down and threaten h7, that's the great move. It didn't feel right because I'm moving a pawn right in front of my king, but it was the best thing to do. They did not play it um, the way that they could have. They could have brought their, their bishop in to add another attacker on this knight. But I take, take, we exchange, and the game goes back to even. But then I blunder again. So this loses a pawn, um, but they miss it. They could have just taken here. And I couldn't have taken back because then queen takes the bishop. So by getting that pawn out of the way, it's a discovered attack on the bishop that I did not see. <clears throat> bishop comes down i move over aligning with the queen and then after the exchange the game is even good move good move good move good move best move and then another blunder this blunder gave white uh, the biggest advantage of the game um, and they played the best move but they did not see the follow-through which was bishop to b6, which attacks the rook. And where would I go from here? From here, if I just, if I move my rook over, then they, then they went, oh, either way it wins the bishop. So, Yeah, a couple of discovered attacks, both with the queen. The first one here to win this bishop. And the second one there to win that, uh, to win this bishop. Gotta keep an eye out for that. That's, uh, that would be detrimental. But takes, takes, here we exchange, and then from here, I think I played perfectly all the way through. Great move, best move, mistake here, that's a great move. Best move, best move, best move, best move, best move, best move, inaccuracy here, best move, best move, best move. And then, um, yeah, we got the resignation. So two discovered attacks could have been the end for me. Um, but I got lucky with my opponent not playing them, but I stayed true to my principles I developed, although a lot of improvement for developing there. And I maintained a time advantage somewhat. Um, I didn't get significantly down and I, I think I used the time when I needed to, um, but I blundered. So. The, it says I played as if I was a 2100. I think it's because I strung together a lot of best and great moves there after my blunders. So there you have it, folks. Uh, Mr. Latest, I'm looking forward to uh, 
latest or lightest. Looking forward to playing you. Um, until next time.